The Chicago Underground Film Festival is our next topic. We have several esteemed guests from what is also known as Cuff, which was spawned, what, 16 years ago? 18. 18, wow. And that was Jay Bliznik? Yeah, he was my partner on the first uh, six years of the festival. Um, well, where, the where is he now? He's actually in culinary school. You're and, kidding. No. 18 and, years and now he wants to be a chef? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, and he just, actually, he just got his first uh, cooking job, cooking for a like, company that uh, caters for movie sets. So he oh, my got God. Got oh, so he's craft services. Hey, all right. That so pays, right? Industry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's move back to the film festival that you guys co-started. Co I know. Food is good. I'm sorry. First, introduce yourselves. Who You are? I'm Brian Woodruff. I'm the uh, artistic director and head programmer for the festival. I'm Robert Todd. I'm one of the filmmakers in the festival. And the name of your film? Oh, Arsenic. All right. And this is Lori. My name is Lori, and I'm the festival coordinator. All right. Thank you very much for coming. Oh, and Lori you, Felker. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And what's your, what's your title? Festival coordinator. I'm sorry, I missed oh. that. See, because I'm distracted. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Lori's also assistant programmer. All right. Well, I was going to be. I was going to ask about programming next. Um, <laughs> the Chicago and Evanston have so many film fests right now. There's Palestinian film fest, Mexican film fest, Haitian, Balkan, nude, gay. Okay, maybe I made some of those up to make a point. But why do we need the Chicago Underground Film Fest? Why not just and why not just watch movies on the internet anyway? I mean, come on, you got to justify yourself. Well, I think the reason to not just watch music movies on the internet is because watching films in a social context with a group of people is a big part of the experience and having conversations about films you see with actual people and actual audiences I mean, watching things on the internet's cool but now but you have a certain niche right i mean th i saw on your website that, that you, you don't want to be indie wood now is that um film speak for like sundance what is that who's yeah, gonna answer of, that question yeah right. um it, the phrase indie wood was coined by a filmmaker named Sarah Jacobson who was at the festival a lot in the early days of the festival and it was at a point where people like Quentin Tarantino and things had where Sundance had kind of started becoming a more of a more mainstream yeah, and more mainstream. market driven yeah. um, and there was kind of a reaction against that and there were films it was harder for films that were truly independent that were didn't have name actors, um, didn't have big production uh, budgets and things to get even get into Sundance at that point. So right. Indy Wood became kind of a phrase she created to like as a slang term against <laughs> against the against kind of mainstream. Kind of of, like, yeah. Well, what about the Tribeca and Toronto and all those? They're pretty. They're pretty big. Yeah. Well, Toronto's huge. Toronto's the largest film festival in North America. Um, Tribeca is pretty big, and tri I mean Tribeca would definitely fall into the indie wood category. I think it's fairly mainstream. We do, yeah. I mean, all those festivals will show things that have a like that, uh, like the work that we show, but they tend to be. It tends to be more of a marginalized side part of what they do, and it's the main focus of what we do. Well, this is the Chicago Underground Film Festival, so I have to be. I have to ask, uh, Lori. Um, how many, first, is there any kind of local bias? I mean, do Chicago filmmakers get any kind of special uh, consideration? Not really special consideration. I mean, you can never divorce the fact that you, if you know people and they have a context around them, like you can't take that out of your brain. So if that adds a little bit when you're watching their work. But we don't do anything special for Chicago filmmakers except that at the end of the fest, there's one award called the Made in Chicago Award. Ah. So there's a special, anything that was made here or made by a Chicago filmmaker, that's one special award. Um, can you um, tell me, like, how many, how, many, how many submissions do you get? We got over a thousand this year, but we only screen about, like, 70 works in total. Well, how do you, how do you uh, get, how do you... Watch them all. <laughs> do you watch? You actually watch them all. We watch them all. I thought you yeah. just said you screened. Oh, I see. We have a screening a, seventy we have a screening to the public of about ten people. But Brian but so they do I, watch them all. Yeah. Yep. Wow. I mean, most of them are watched by multiple people, and they go through rounds, and then ultimately things have to and be passed. And they Brian rank them and, and filter them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's quite a we process. Have rating scales. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I do want to. Um, 
sort of read a couple of the, uh, just to, to pique people's interest. And by the way, the festival just started last night, I believe, was the opening uh, it night? It was actually Thursday night. It was, was Thursday opening night. night. Okay. And last night there were three programs. However, it is not too late to no. come out, and there's a lot going on, and if our listeners, you know, are definitely lucky to find out about this as early as they have, if they haven't heard about it already. Um, but I do want to read a couple of the um, intriguing and titles and descriptions. Uh, one that I wish I'd seen which I, I think was it had all, has already played. You can tell me if this is going to play again. Monica Panzerino sings the Star Spangled Banner. She sings the Star Spangled Banner with the help of the Freak Shift Reverb Audio Bra, right. a performance tool <laughs> built by the artist. The bra uses hardware, potentiometers, or knobs, uh, an Arduino microcontroller, and a Max MSP software patch to process the audio signal in real time. The right nipple of the bra <laughs> manipulates the frequency of the signal, and the left nipple adds reverb. How can you not want to go see something it's like fantastic. that? It's fantastic. It was our it was our very first video that showed before the opening night feature and everyone stood for the Star Spangled Banner. Oh my god. She was there. She's a local artist actually and she performs live with the Fantastic. With the bra too. Is it is it I mean I wish they'd have her like at, you know, Wrigley Field or something. That would I be know. awesome. We, we awesome. asked her. She's not she's thinking about it. I think she's it's thinking gonna, about it. She's okay. those ideas. And there's yeah. also roller things derbies. Like, roller derbies. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, there's also uh, some other titles Zoltan the Hungarian Gangster of Love. Yep, that's uh, today. Young Bird Season, which, you know, you don't have a lot of documentaries, but you have some documentaries. Um, Young Bird Season sounds great. Uh, yeah, she's, and that filmmaker's in town this week. Really? Weekend, too, Nelly. So she'll be there, and mm-hmm. that is screening when? Today at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock. In that program. It's actually in Rob's program. Oh, ah, okay. Is that a segue? No. Okay, <laughs> and then there's another one. The Battle for Brooklyn is another documentary. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Do you want to talk about that? Sure. Um, Battle for Brooklyn is a documentary... Uh, made by a New York filmmaker named Michael Galinsky, who's, uh, I think this is maybe his fifth film in the festival. He's been showing... So you like with, him. Yeah, he's been showing uh, work, both narrative features and documentaries, um, since I think the first film of his was the second year of the festival. But it's a documentary about a uh, attempt to uh, build this big sports arena in... In uh, Brooklyn, in Brooklyn, in like that, um, where they ended up using eminent domain to displace a lot of residents in the area. To so basically, to, the city condemns it so the yeah. developer can come in and and, and make it's some all money. about and it, and and you you know the whole idea of eminent domain is supposed to be for like public works and like build, exactly. you know, things. But this the is just for the public interest. Yeah. yeah, and this was just for. A developer. Profit. Yeah. So it was like a, the film was seven years um, following a s- activist attempts to stop this project. Wow. Um, and it's a very personal story about this this guy and how, who is a resident there who and how he kind of got became more of an activist through fighting against this thing. Um, it's a pretty interesting documentary. Um, it's like how, how to become an activist, how to, how to yeah. grow your own grassroots movement. Yeah, yeah. fight the and man. And the struggles and like that's right up our good alley. Good and bad. Here, that, really. Yeah, yeah. I actually thought that um, we wa- wanted to actually get Michael here. Um, his flight is coming in later today, so he couldn't make the radio show. But I thought that was a film that so he's the he, listeners he will are, also be here. The director will be mm-hmm. here. And when is his when that's is tonight, battle eight, for Brooklyn? Eight o'clock tonight. Awesome. Well, now let us move on to discuss Uh-oh. your film. Yeah. How about it? Well, first introduce what yourself you again. Rob Todd. I'm from R- Boston. From Boston. Yeah. And um, um, short movies. Ars- arsenic. Arsenic. And I, and I watched that along with Space Boy and some other shorts. Uh-huh. Okay, first, it was beautiful. Um, but cool. tell me, yeah. <laughs> but wh- tell me why, People you know, why. Sh- that about my movies. Uh, sorry. Well, uh, I oh. thought so. Um, well. But uh, tell me why you do shorts and why, you know, like. Okay, a lot of reasons to do shorts, but I want to back up on something you okay. about coming to the festival. First of all, like one of the things about underground is the underground thing. It's like you know we're the infidel, you know, to some degree. You're um, the infidels. Yeah, I mean a lot of t- like there are a number of people I know who don't put their stuff on the internet. They just won't. So this is the only place you're going to see that. Why won't they? Um, I mean that's where it's happening. Well, what's happening is the co- sort of question, oh, I right? see. You know? Oh, no well, filters, no said. filters. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, you know, like what Brian said, it's like you know, you know, people coming out, it's sort of like group flash mobs, 
in a way, you know, to go and actually see these things, get together and have conversations about them. That's different than the Internet where whatever's happening, I don't know these people. Well, whatever. you know, or there's a tweet or there's somebody blogs about it. But, yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah, it's it's not face-to-face contact. It, it absolutely is. I agree. I yeah. agree. And plus, there's not you can't say that much in a tweet, I don't think. Mm. I mean, you know. Yeah, and you can't look at it. Like, the eye movements, one of the best things is, like, when you said, okay, it's really beautiful. Like, I love when people, they're, they approach my movie, they look at me and they're like, it's... Uh, uh, Are you serious? Really? It does this thing, and I'm not sure what it's doing. And I love watching their body like contort to try to wow. make the movie. It's pretty wow. awesome. Okay. Face to face is cool. But but so also let's get back to your motive motives. Why do you why do you why do I make do shorts? You, yeah, why, why I make shorts? Sixteen millimeter movies. Ah, actual and film. I use the actual film mechanism wow. and the film film, and it actually looks what we call awesome. On the screen. <laughs> That's so, another film term, right? Yeah, yeah. it's a film term it's special no, it's for these kinds of screens. I mean, the Siskels like they do they have a great screen? Really kicking. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I didn't so, know that. I mean, that's what's that so good be about a draw it. Draw for you folky people out there. Like, go and see the awesomeness of the screeniness. Well, what's so, what, but wait a minute. What's so great about the uh, Gene Siskel's screening equipment? It's large. Got great sound. It's like they've got. It's got really great projectionists. Ah, and that oh, counts. I didn't know the projectionists doing meant, it. Are you like dating one, or why are we? I mean, no, like, no. I am one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and we all have these. You know, it's a bad projection for a filmmaker. It's just like you know, ear. You know, the whole thing. They actually have. There's down. actually some quality control going on there. Yeah, okay. It's really, really hot. But well, we, you know, the other thing. Okay, so you know, I shoot in 16 millimeter, and you can. I make a. a bunch of movies a year but i'm not going to make a bunch of features in a year well I no got, i got like add in terms of ideas like things just keep coming out and i definitely love reacting to the world and making a movie that is right in front of me it's like right happening so you know making a longer term i am making a longer term movie and it's just killing me you know it's, it's like a year. like who was that guy who started your, this movie your attention span and you have changed so much yeah, yeah. okay well there's an, i want to say another thing this guy yeah all right night, this guy last night, he showed a movie, and he, he showed a movie, and he was, like, really, he's hedging on showing it outside of the world of, you know, where we're screening, you know, like this uh, underground festival kind oh, of thing I or see. whatever. And one of the reasons, he knows it's, like, really controversial subject matter, but he wanted to make the controversial subject matter come out of himself. Like, his impulse was to make this movie just to make the movie, not to make it, like, for a mass audience or anything like uh -huh. that, but to... To really just have it boil out of his pores. And which and movie was this, by the way? Profane. Profane. Yeah, and profane. Now, was that about the... They're not twins. They're... Which one is that? Profane, which uh, screams oh. again later in the week, is okay. uh, about a Muslim woman who's a sex worker in Chicago. I think that's my cell oh, phone. That's good. Uh, Professional. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's, it's okay. It adds ambience. Yeah. Um, yeah, so she's a, a Muslim sex worker in Chicago, and it's about her struggles between her Western kind of that aspect of her personality and her traditional Muslim side, and which side is going to win. It's kind of a horror story, horror film. There's some um, spirits, a jinn, yeah. Oh, so it's not like a sort of straight. Of course, nothing in your in your lineup would be. Uh, it's a little bit straight. Okay. I think, well, I think Color Wheel is pretty, well, somewhat conventional. But anyway, back to Profane. So, so yeah, it, it deals with this kind of struggle between the West and the, the Muslim world in one person. And, and Yusam al Shaibi, the director, he, is, he was born in Iraq and also lived in Saudi Arabia as a child and now has been living in the United States for a long time. So this film, the character, is kind of talking about his own struggles with these things um, and his wife was a sex worker at one wow. time um, so it's very personal and he's taking the characters in the film are all playing characters that are fiction but there's elements in everyone that's based on based who on that person people. really is too okay well so did the audience find that film controversial or no was there a lot of reaction to it? You, 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 let's, you were in the audience. <laughs> yeah, was, yeah. I mean, there were two particular... There were three people who had comments that were related to the controversial nature of the film, and two of them were Muslim males. Well, of course. Yeah, and, so, but, and their response to it was very encouraging. They were saying, you know, you really should get this out because young people over there in the Muslim world, or I'd say everywhere, it's not, there's no over there. It's like all over the place. 
um, really need to see this because they need they deal with these issues. They grapple with the issue of their own burgeoning sexuality and the traditional faith and traditional cultures, more like cultures that are kind of fueling their lives. So. You know, it was pretty great to see that. It's very supportive, but also recognition. They have, there's a strong recognition of the spe- specific things that the guy's playing with. Well, I want to bring up a couple of other films that looked interesting. Um, Half Lifers and Friends. Is that a film or is that a multimedia live performance? What is that? It's a curated program um, of videos by. There was a video art group, a, a duo that went by the name Half Lifers. Um, mostly worked in the 90s they're releasing a dvd release of their work right now and this program is a selection of films that they of their own work and then other work by artists that kind of came out of the same period in of video art in the 90s um what for example like one of the filmmakers in that half-lifers program is jennifer reeder who's a chicago artist who's also been in the festival many, many times, but they're showing one of her early pieces, uh, The Adventures of White Trash Girl, in that program. Last night, her new film played before Profane. Um, and what and was they're that? they're very different. That, um, it's got a longer title. And I went, well, will it, will it be rescreened, I guess, is the yeah, question. Yeah, it'll okay. reshow when Profane shows again. It's called Tears Cannot Restore Her, Therefore I Weep. All right. Kicking. It's kicking. All right. And it's very different from what she was doing uh, 15 years ago in her first work in the festival. So you can see her development. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's got different... And she's also made narrative features now. Um, she, she Yeah, she teaches oh, at UIC. Um, what's her name again? Jennifer Reeder. All right. But, um, I need to sort of wrap things up. I guess I just want um, you to say one more thing. I mean, are you proud to be included in this festival? Oh, Is this a prestigious this or not prestigious? Yeah, or? it's prestigious. You know, it's the longest running underground festival at this point. There, all right. Yeah, and it's been great. These guys are really serious programmers, and right. it's fabulous to be with all these people that are here. All right. We love well, it. Thank you all for coming. Uh, just to remind our listeners, this festival has just barely started. Chicago Underground Film Festival, also known as Cuff. It's playing at the Gene Siskel uh, until there is something for everyone. It is, it's really some pretty extravagant explorations. Um, I personally screened um, Color Wheel and Arsenic and some other shorts, and I was really, really impressed. So uh, put it on your schedule. Check it out. And... Um, Support your local film festival. All right. um, We're going to thank you for coming. Thank you.